hello. I'm very nice to, to meet you, Catherine. Could you um, maybe present you in a few words what you do? Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> I'm a 2D animator and visual development artist, and I also do a bit of illustration as well. Um, yeah, I work primarily in TV paint, and I graduated last June from NUA in Norwich in the UK. So you were an animation student and now you do animation for a living? Yeah, I'm currently freelance, um, though also working on quite a few um, just like little sketches and videos and I've started um, doing tutorials on YouTube as well. Yeah, I, I discovered you actually with the tutorials. You, you began like a month ago to publish videos. Yeah, pretty recent. Um, it's, I find it as a really good way to actually like analyze my process because mm -hmm. sometimes if you animate something and it works really well and then maybe a few months later, you're like, how did I do that? Um, so it's, yeah, recording my screen and just talking through the process actually helps me remember what I did yeah. as well. <laughs> how did you know that you wanted to do uh, something in animation? Well, my high school actually, they weren't really big on art subjects mm -hmm. and most of the, it was like English, math, science, and then like geography, history, um, and art was kind. Of, art and music were kind of seen as being as sort of like a hobby and not a real job. Yeah. Um, I so I took art um, as like a side thing, as as well as like business and business studies and whatever. And my art teacher actually told me he was like you'll never make money drawing cartoons. And so I was like, okay. Um, he he was adamant that the only way you made money in art was if you were a teacher or you were a fine artist. And that was it. Uh, <laughs> so I decided to go to college and I chose English, um, language and literature and textiles and graphics and fine art <laughs> and I didn't actually realize that animation was something you could do the college was still quite adamant that mm -hmm. artists weren't paid very well and there's the stereotype of starving artist and it's all they were like oh it's all doom and gloom and you'll end up on the street <laughs> and yeah you'll never make any money and you'll just have to work in Tesco or something um, but then I heard there was actually a open day for the uni I went to, NUA. They were offering all these courses, illustration and animation. And then I was like, oh, people actually do that. So um, I went and had a look at the open day and I went to a taster day and yeah, just did some research. And I was like, well, actually I wanna do this. Um, before that, I was gonna become a writer and go to a different university. Um, but yeah, and then I, I went to, I went to NUA and got accepted and yeah, I just went from there. <laughs> and so you discovered about, uh, TV paint during your scholarship? Yeah. Um, I had a look at software and I tried flash, but I didn't really understand it. And Toon Boom, I hadn't heard of until I went to uni. Um, but they used TV paint. It was the first time I'd seen it. And it was actually really easy to use. I'd, I wasn't the typical 2D animator, or maybe it is a more typical thing, but I kind of struggled with the traditional 2D and always found it really time consuming to have to draw things and then put them through like the camera so you could actually play it back. It just took forever and there was mistakes. And when you're first starting out, it's very difficult to keep failing and see little improvement so i was like well maybe if i try digital and my tutor introduced me to tv paint having being able to flick through the frames and just play it back instantly was saved so much time they let you try everything out in the first year so we did 2d and stop motion and 3d i quite liked stop motion a few of my friends actually did hybrid animation so they did stop motion and then animated in tv paint on top of the models okay. uh, that was really fun 2d was something i just kept coming back to and in second year um i actually bought tv paint and yeah i didn't regret it at all <laughs> 
I decided to get the professional version because I knew it would last me and the fact that it was like a one-off payment rather than subscription which everything is subscription now and I was like well if I just buy it now it's mine forever and it was just so much easier I, I literally use it every day <laughs> even on my days off yeah and so you um, you were working on your um, graduation film and uh, yeah. maybe you can show something or, or talk about it yeah so rule number three was really inspired by my family and little things in my childhood. So we did, my nan used to have like a sweet cupboard and that was where the jar came from. TV paint really helped like with the character designs, just like sketching them out and being able to like use lots of different layers to switch things about. It was really easy to go from roughs to line, to color. Did you have some uh, challenges on the movie about the story or the character design? You were alone on this film or with a team? Yeah, it was, it was all me. Um, the brief was 30 seconds yeah. and it ended up being a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it always does that. Usually I was a lot of character-based animation and I'd always got someone else to do the backgrounds and when you draw a character, it's usually just the character in a white background or mm. like a little bit of color in it. Um, so the real challenge was actually doing the backgrounds for this. Um, they were illustrated in Photoshop, but it was easy to like position and import them into TV Paint. I think the storyboards took the longest, so I had several meetings with my tutors to reshuffle those, and we played around with different perspectives, and it was just so easy to just move layers and the position of the jars that scene probably took the longest um yeah so just moving the position of the shelf and having all the jars along that and being able to move them on the thing in tv paint just like frame by frame rather than exporting the jars and positioning them all in after effects and then taking them back into tv paint i did most of my compositing in tv paint as well just export and it made it so much easier. How long is the production of a short film in your school? So I think overall with tweaks it took me six months give or take. Okay. Yeah so a little bit longer but um, it was a lot longer than the brief and the back. I didn't mean to do the backgrounds quite so detailed but they ended up being it's just oh I just add this small line here yeah, and always. that jar on the shelf and oh. Now we are like a free and uh, and you, yeah. can, you can do uh, whatever you want so what are your, your current projects and how do you manage them um currently i'm working on uh, a submission for a competition it's like a minute long and we animate to um, a minute long of dialogue and i'm working on that with several people jack hale um james ever ed clark who are also in what productions which is our animation collective and we all use tv paint <laughs> in our second year of uni my friend james actually directed a short film called panoramic for channel 4 random acts and that's on their youtube channel and it was shown in a couple of festivals over the uk and it was a 3D, 2D hybrid. They did the backgrounds in 3D and they had a 3D model of the character, which they used Toon Shaden on in Maya. There's like several float and screens that we did animations in 2D for TV paint. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot easier to use a 3D background um, and then animate on top. So it's something we're looking forward to doing again. So now you are in a... Uh, uh, it's a collective, a studio, it's a what production? And uh, yeah. how did you create it? it? It was just after school you decided to team up? Yeah, so we decided that we worked well as a team. We'd already ironed out several bugs um, and processes during uni because we'd worked together before. And we decided that why not use that and go into the freelance world and just keep making cool stuff together since we enjoyed it so much. We're all remote and we contact each other online and send briefs and use Dropbox to send each other files. Maybe your, your goal is to like have a, a studio somewhere to, to work? Yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd love to have a studio somewhere. Um, we're kind of torn between Norwich 
and London, uh, their price ranges are a bit different. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll 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 see. But that's that's the goal. And uh, maybe you have some um, some tips for like animation students during school or when when they uh, go out of school. It's kind of scary, I think. So maybe yeah. you have something to help them to manage school and after school. Time management is key. <laughs> um, even if, even if, so when you're in school, it's really important to just have at least an hour a day. Even if you don't feel like drawing, if you do a single drawing, you're better than you were before making that drawing. If you've got a short film, you've got like three minutes to do and Well, no, no student has a three-minute film. Uh, yeah, not alone. <laughs> if, if, yeah, if you otherwise they'd be like crazy. But um, if if you have a minute of a film to do and you're halfway through and you're really struggling, sometimes it is easier to take a day off. Like self-care is so important. And if you're feeling drained and like go outside for a walk, um, actually eat some dinner. <laughs> I skipped so many meals in uni because I was just. I was just drawing and the same is kind of for after uni as well because you're animating and trying to get your portfolio to be so much better um but yeah definitely take some breaks and don't beat yourself up about it if you're not where you wanted to be or you had you thought you were going to get a job straight out of uni It does take a little bit of work but you will get there if you just keep going and be persistent That's some great tips and uh, uh, that was good <laughs> uh, i wanted to know about like uh, you're, you're talking about portfolio and maybe mm -hmm. making you uh, known from people who can hire you so mm -hmm. what do you think about sharing on social media because you and other artists from uh, what production are sharing many things on instagram yeah. and facebook i think social media is really important so you can see other people's work and get other people seeing your own And if someone likes your page or your photo or like an illustration you did, it's a lot easier to start a conversation with that person, particularly if there's someone whose work you admire or if they're a young artist and they like your work and they ask for tips. It's really important to like support other people on social media as well. Um, just getting your work out there is a lot easier than just having a portfolio site because no one knows no one's going to search Catherine Dallymore animator or illustration and find my website they're going to look on the tags of Instagram and Twitter and just go through the tags and oh uh, Catherine Dallymore Katie Sketch is posting this I like the look of this let's have a look at her profile and then maybe they'll follow me so it's just a lot easier to get in contact uh. with people I think people from not social media age, I imagine them as uh, like struggling to, to contact people and having to go uh, door to door to, uh, <laughs> to find work. But now you just have to, to make a tag and take a picture. The animation community is really, really helpful and so kind. And they've answered quite a lot of questions that I've had before. So I was convinced when I was at uni that there was some big secret to make an animation and a film and they just weren't telling me. And it turns out it's not as hard as you think it's going to be. The only thing stopping you from making animation is you. And it's so easy to get started, but so hard at the same time. So I I'd never actually animated anything until I applied for my uni. Um, I do, I'd done characters and portraits and uh, graphic design, but um, just getting started was the biggest thing. And so you can get some, what are they called? Post-it notes and do like a little flip book or a notebook and do a flip book. And you don't have to have any special software until maybe you look into it later or you start uni Um, but there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of tutorials that people can use and just starting to animate and <laughs> get going is top tip. <laughs> Later on, you start learning how to work with people. So like you do your work on time and you name the files correctly. <laughs> <Yeah>. And 
yeah, and you just answer their emails when you e when they email you. So that is is they do it in kind of baby steps, and each of it pre each step prepares you for the group projects later, uh, and then obviously working in the real world. <laughs> and uh, are you interested in getting in a big studio to make uh, animation, or do you prefer? to be like in a small team or, or on your own to do uh, the project you want? How do you... I, I quite like a bit of everything. So maybe freelance for small and big studios. Um, and then I'd like to have some time and money yeah. <laughs> to make my own personal projects. Um, that would be like ideal. But if I could make enough money just freelancing for myself or something for my own projects that would be that would be great as well thank you Catherine, for for being here it was great thanks for having me and you can follow me on instagram and twitter and youtube at k sketch feel free also to download the free demo version of tv paint so you can start to draw and animate things share what you what you have done in the comments so we can both see uh, what you did and it could be great to comment on it yeah see you later for another interview <laughs> Yes, yes. Hopefully I'll be able to reveal those secret projects. <laughs> yeah, I really want to know, like, I'm teased now. <laughs> <laughs>